Welcome to the Science of Performance. I'm your host, Sean Russell. Throughout this series, we'll be bringing you useful information on nutrition and offering helpful tips on how to maximize your efforts during training. Sit tight, the Science of Performance starts now. We all know that muscle fibers play a huge role in athletic performance, but what exactly are they? From slow twitch to fast twitch, we'll have you in the know faster than you can say adenosine triphosphate. Hello and welcome to episode one of the Science of Performance. Today I'll be joined by the Director of Scientific Affairs at Iovate Health Sciences International, Raza Bashir, International Fitness Consultant Joe Arco, and our athlete Dylan Thomas. But first, we'll be going to the Gold Ring Center for High Performance Sport at the University of Toronto, where the new Iovate Muscle Tech Metabolism and Sports Science Lab is located, to take a closer look at the wide world of muscle fibers. I'd like to welcome Raza Bashir to the show. Welcome. Glad to be here. Great. Let's get to the science with the big question. How do slow twitch fibers differ from fast twitch fibers? Sure thing. These two types of fibers are generally accepted as the main categories into which muscle fibers fall. Slow twitch fibers are better suited for endurance type workouts, while fast twitch fibers are predominantly utilized during quick, explosive motions. Let's say I'm an athlete who has been training at a moderate to high level. How can understanding my own muscle fiber profile help in maximizing my training results? Well, those who have a predominant amount of fast twitch fibers would be great at sprinting or powerlifting. And those that have a greater proportion of slow twitch fibers may be better suited for swimming or long distance running. We like to challenge ourselves here at the Science of Performance. Joe, what do you have on tap for us today? Sean, Dylan, do you guys mind coming over here for a second? I'm gonna take you through a test that has been suggested to estimate the relative proportions of slow twitch and fast twitch fibers in the muscles you use, such as those in the chest during a bench press. Earlier we had performed a one rep max test to determine the maximum weight these two can each lift. Now we're going to get them to do as many reps as possible with 80% of that weight. Because Dylan did seven reps, that means he is predominantly fast twitch. And because Sean repped out above 12, that means he has predominantly slow twitch fibers. Now if either of these guys fell within the 9 to 12 range, they'd be considered to both have equal proportions of fast and slow twitch fibers. How does this ratio relate to our performance? Well, when it comes to chest press, I might suggest that Dylan focus on powerlifting large weights, while you, Sean, should use moderate weights and higher reps. Keep in mind, there's some classic studies that suggest you can turn your concentration of specific fibers into another type if you focus on the specific type of exercise you want to excel at. But your muscle fiber concentration has a general sense of plasticity anyway. In fact, fast twitch muscles can even be broken down further into subcategories. What's more, muscle fibers can even become more fatigue resistant and adapted to various types of training without switching fiber types. Clearly, there are many elements when it comes to muscle fibers and understanding their properties. Fascinating. I'd like to thank Raza, Joe, and Dylan for joining us on our first episode. Next time on the Science of Performance, we'll look at the science of energy systems. What are they and where do they come into play in your workouts? Until next time, I'm Sean Russell. Stay fit and stay focused.